The Case of the Twin Games, Frogger and Dodo Peak, Rayman Mini, and Way of the Turtle. This is all about Apple Arcade. about Apple Arcade is the unofficial podcast about Apple Arcade games, featuring news, reviews of the games themselves, and interviews with gamers and the creators behind the games. Join us on Facebook or Twitch, all about Apple Arcade, and on Twitter, Apple Arcade Pod. Welcome back to All About Apple Arcade. Thank you to everyone who has been listening and sharing the show and sending in feedback. Thank you so much to the folks who have joined us on Facebook. You you can find links in the show notes, but uh, our Facebook group and page are there on uh, that service. We're also on Twitter. You can uh, find us, uh, Apple Arcade Pod, on Twitter because... Uh, usernames have to be a very brief length there. Everywhere else, we're all about Apple Arcade. We're on Twitch as well. Uh, some folks have been watching us stream, and uh, you can find us on YouTube. Links for all of that is in the show notes, as I said. But again, all of that is also linked at allaboutapplearcade.com now. Uh, yay, we've got a domain. So this week, I want to get right into it because we've got a cool show and we've got our first guest on the show with my wife, Kelly, uh, being that, that guest. I'm really excited to have her on here. I've been sort of haranguing her all week uh, to record this conversation. I've been playing a lot of four different games and at first it was weird because I felt like even as I started a game for the first time, I felt like I had played it before and I had that feeling again and I all of a sudden I began to see some real patterns and I thought, Hey, I've got an episode here. I've got an episode to talk about these four games. The four games in question are Frogger in Toy Town, uh, which is one of the big launch titles for Apple Arcade. All of these, by the way, are in the initial launch batch of games. We still don't have as of, uh, I'm recording this here on Wednesday, October 2nd, and we still don't have any new games quote unquote, rolled out onto the service. It'll be interesting to see how they do that and how the promotion goes too. So anyway, I'm looking now at uh, Frogger in Toy Town. This is one of the games that was actually demoed on stage at the fall Apple event where they launched the new iPhones and reminded everyone that Apple Arcade was about to be available. Frogger in Toy Town, of course, comes with the license of Frogger. It is a game from Konami and uh, a big developer, you know, a major video game developer, uh, an actual license, a, a, a franchise, as it were, of games that goes back to the very beginning of, of video gaming, modern, modern video gaming as we think about it. Um, you'd think this would be a big one, especially since it got the time on stage at the event. And yet I was compelled to play this at all myself because John Gruber was remarking on his podcast, the talk show the other day that, uh, we, even with the demo on stage that, you know, is an interminable length, all those demos go too long and the developers in the audience don't really want to watch people play video games. I don't think anybody wants to watch somebody else play video games actually. Like it's not, it's not the way streams work. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, John was saying that even with all of that press that it got, he hadn't heard anybody talking about the game after release. He had read a lot of blogs and reviews of different Apple Arcade games. He said he hadn't seen any press about this game. So I thought about that, and Gruber was right I, for me, too. I had not read anything about Frogger post the Apple event. So I loaded it up. And I played it, I played through, I think, two or three levels right away. Let me tell you a little bit about the game and just like how it works. The story for Frogger sets you as the rescue leader for a group of baby frogs or, or child children frogs that have been uh, lost due to a, uh, a tornado that's come through. They've been lost at a bunch of people's houses, uh, humans' houses. And so... 
the levels are playing through parts of the humans' houses, in particular the first levels. It's literally like the kids' room, and so there's a bunch of toys that you have to work around and, you know, books to climb over and things like that. The graphics are very impressive, I will say, and it's obviously a tremendous upgrade on the basic formula of Frogger from years past. Simple things like the cars and trucks that you are having to work around uh, as they cross on the road in the first couple of levels, those are toy cars and trucks, wind-up cars and trucks, and in fact, if you time it right, you can jump on the back of them and it it works just fine. Uh, You won't get crushed. So there are some absolute cute aspects. This game is not a total loss, but as I began to play it, I immediately had that feeling of deja deja vu that I mentioned, and it was like, where have I played this before? And it became clear very quickly that the same basic, you know, point or game design that is found in Frogger, which is individual levels where you have a series of missions or goals for each level. In this case, it's, you know, collect all the baby frogs, uh, don't lose any life, maybe do it in 40 seconds, something like that, or avoid all the, pen, you know, don't get stabbed by a pen, or, or make sure that you knock out the, I don't know, toy soldier or something like that, whatever. I'd seen this before. I'd seen this same mechanic recently in an Apple Arcade game, it felt like, and I was like, where, where have I played this game before? Finally, it dawned on me, it's Dodo Peak. Dodo Peak is another great game uh, from Apple Arcade, and uh, there is a link for it in the show notes as well. Dodo Peak Dodo Peak is created by the developer Moving Pieces, and while the graphics are much simpler in Dodo Peak than Frogger, and the levels are much shorter, I actually found the gameplay infinitely more enjoyable first and foremost and this is not necessarily the developer's fault you know it's difficult right now ios 13 has been very very buggy in the beta period and i continue to run betas even today on most of my devices not my apple tv though i'll say and i have had frogger is the only frogger in toy town is the only game in the apple arcade uh, group that i've had actually crash on me on both the Apple TV and the iPad. It, it's locked up and, and actually crashed. Uh, Dodo Peak runs smoother. It's a much smaller install, too. Uh, but I found, in general, that the level design is more creative and enjoyable. And also, the play is a lot faster. You can play two or three levels of Dodo Peak in the time it takes you to play one level of Frogger. And what's most interesting to me is... Once I noticed the similarity in these two games, I noticed two more. (laughs) One that I was already playing quite a lot called uh, Way of the Turtle. Again, the link to this one directly is in the show notes to the podcast. Uh, Way of the Turtle is a cute little platformer where you play as a uh, turtle uh, shipwrecked on his honeymoon and separated from Mrs. Turtle and you're trying to play your way across the island through these strange winding temples and uh, find your way back to your lost love. It's very, very cool. There's this neat aesthetic of power-ups in the form of the shells themselves. You can chain shells, and each of the shells has an ability that it allows you to perform in addition to the regular movements, which are just to jump and to move to the left or right. Uh, This game is almost an auto-runner. It's a platformer, but you move automatically unless you use... There is a blue shell which has the ability to pause in place. Uh, So unless you actually use that ability the turtle's going to be moving. The question is, are they moving to the left or the right? This game allows you to control that, and you can change direction as you want to. So especially like jumping onto a uh, a moving platform that goes up and down, you can use the back and forth directions, changing your direction back and forth quickly to keep yourself in place, even if you don't have the blue shell on, as an example of how that mechanism can come into place. By the way, you can check on my Twitch stream, or you can check on the Facebook page for some video play of uh, Way of the Turtle. I will say the stuff that's up there as I'm recording this is of me playing on the iPad with touch controls, and I am just not very good at it that way. I feel like if I'd only played that way, I'd actually adapt to it pretty quickly, but I have been playing this game primarily with a PS4 controller on the Apple TV. It is delightful 
that way. This sort of auto running, it moves automatically. You work your way around the levels and platforms, collecting coins, collecting tokens, and uh, building up your strength as you discover the mysteries of this island. I love it, and as you're going to hear in a little while, um, Kelly even enjoys Way of the Turtle quite a lot. It is her favorite of all of the games that we're talking about today. But again, as with Frogger and Dodo Peak, I felt a bit of, hmm, I feel like I've played this game before. And the mirror image for um, Way of the Turtle is another licensed game, as in the case of Frogger. Uh, In this case, we're talking about Rayman Mini. The show notes include a link directly so that you can uh, load it up and play it if you haven't tried it yet. It is a good game. I would say of these four, I would rank them uh, Way of the Turtle, probably Dodo Peak, then Rayman Mini, and then finally Frogger as the bottom of these four. But Rayman Mini, like Way of the Turtle, is an auto runner. The difference here is that you cannot change Rayman's direction uh, left or right by yourself with the D-pad or with the analog stick on your controller or, or by using touch. The only way to change Rayman's direction is by using the environment. If he bounces into a wall and then jumps off of it, he'll change direction to move in the opposite direction. And that comes into play several times throughout the levels. I will say again... The graphics are more intensive and more artful in some ways. They're more fully realized in Rayman Mini, uh, just as with Frogger in Toy Town, compared to their sort of twin games here in Dodo Peak and Way of the Turtle. And yet, Way of the Turtle and Dodo Peak are our favorites as far as the play style. We're going to hear from Kelly in just a minute as far as why she thought that was. But all of these games, by the way, I'm remiss if I don't mention uh, the developer for Rayman Mini is Ubisoft. Of course, the Rayman franchise has been on console games for a while. This one, I'm not a big fan of the Rayman franchise. I haven't played it historically. It's not a game that I've picked up in the past. But I have played, um, I think, through three full worlds, so like 15 or 16 levels in this. And I do enjoy it quite a lot. It's just that... It's sort of mirror here in Way of the Turtle is, I think, a more enjoyable game overall. Interesting to me that we have these similarities. And I think as I go through uh, and give you an overview of more of the catalog for Apple Arcade, we might find that uh, there are even more of these sort of twins, uh, twin sets. I would love to hear from you, by the way, if you have a uh, a twin set of games um, and, and what you're playing, what you're enjoying on Apple Arcade. Speaking of, before we hear from Kelly and our discussion about these four games, I want to tell you that you can always give us feedback. You can email us all about Apple Arcade at iCloud.com. You can also use the Google Voice number 318-935-0332. Or, uh, like I said, you can email us. And we did get uh, one email this past week from Ronald Calderon. Ronald says, Joel, just wanted to thank you for making this podcast. I'm a huge fan of Apple Arcade. I'm super happy to be able to listen to your views, reviews, and criticisms of this service. I enjoyed the first episode immensely. Look forward to many more. Thank you so much, Ron. And uh, let us know what you're playing, what you're enjoying, particularly if you find uh, one of those (laughs) sort of twin pairs like we're talking about in this episode. You can also give us feedback on our Facebook page or the group all about Apple Arcade, either place. Just search for All About Apple Arcade on Facebook or check the show notes there. And uh, yeah, that'll take care of you. Greg Barber found us and was asking about episode three. I asked him to give us a little bit of feedback. First of all, he was very disappointed to find that his Apple TV third generation, which had been in the closet for a while, he pulled it out of storage and hooked it back up. It is not compatible with the Apple Arcade service. That's right. It's the Apple uh, TV fourth generation. That's the the taller one that has the full downloadable apps. If it's got an app store and the Siri remote, then you're good. If it doesn't have those things, it's not 
not capable or compatible with Apple Arcade. Uh, the Apple TV 4K, of course, will also support it. That's the one that I got. Uh, I was telling Greg I bought it refurbished. I think I mentioned that on last episode. and uh, Or not refurbished, but used. <laughs> so I got a good deal on it. And um, again, if you don't have one yet, maybe wait another couple of weeks and let's see if there's an Apple event. Let's see if they announce a new device. I'd love to see an updated one with the faster processor, the A12, or even the brand new A13. I doubt it would include that one, but you know, we could hope. Greg also says though, that he wanted to, well, first of all, he's coined a name for the show. He calls us the four A's. I like that all about Apple arcade. Uh, I like that. We'll, we'll be the quad A's perhaps. Um, so Greg was playing through a few games. He played through a little Sayonara and some Frogger. I asked him to send us some feedback on any of those. He said he really enjoyed Dodo Peak and enjoyed it better than Frogger. It seems to know its place better on mobile. That was his note about Dodo Peak, and I agree. I think that fits in with what I said earlier about it being shorter play sessions. You can play through two or three levels of Dodo Peak in the same time that it takes you to play through one level of Frogger. Frogger seems bigger, almost too varied a version of what makes its original and essential. It's gotten too far from its basics. That said, it looks polished, and I need to give it a bit more of a playthrough on iPad with a PS4 controller. Not played the platformer you mentioned, but I will add them to the list. And that that was, uh, I was talking about Way of the Turtle and uh, Rayman Mini there. So um, Greg comes from the UK. He says he's going to be one of our... UK correspondence. I appreciate that, Greg. Uh, stiff upper lip, uh, old man, and all that. <laughs> and uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for giving us feedback. So check the show notes, join us those places, and you can join the conversation as well. Now, here's my conversation <laughs> with Kelly. God, I was like really talking very well. Aren't you an editor? I am an editor. <laughs> So uh, not not only are we yeah 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 we'll we'll start again. So we are we are capturing this. I'm going to plead that it's very late and I've and I've I've worked hard all day. Uh Kelly, tell everybody where we are. In our bedroom. <laughs> where the magic happens. <laughs> We're set up. We're set up to record in our bedroom. I'm I'm standing next to the bed with a stand up mic. You've got a uh, you know a boom arm on the nightstand uh, next to your side of the bed, and we're playing a little Apple Arcade game. Yeah, I wasn't standing up for this. You're no, you're sitting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't going to stand up for this. Oh. <laughs> and we're, Mama's tired. We're playing. Uh, <laughs> we're playing a little Apple Arcade on the Apple TV here in the bedroom. So we're going to be talking about these four games a little bit, and you had some really interesting thoughts on a couple of them in particular. And then there's a there's a broader topic that I wanted to touch on with you too. But before we get to all of that, explain to everyone, like, what's your background in gaming? What kind of gamer have you been, and what, what kind of games do you like to play these days? I've never been a console um, player, really. I've played on other people's console game systems but i've never owned one i'm i've lived in a house with them but i've never owned one and then more recently i really like the match three games like you have to solve puzzles by matching three different squares that are the same color or blow up a certain number of bombs and then you get stars if you complete all those challenges and the stars help you do things in the game like redo a garden or uh, restore an old home and you have like little side stories and stuff it's like some jilted lover or something what are the what are the there's a series of games that oh. you play with the with the butler or whatever yes the gardenscape gardenscape that's yeah the, i like, like those. gardenscape and homescape there's and gardenscapes homescapes yes but there's also others that i play on my phone okay this is this is Okay, yeah, so I've got Gardenscapes, Homescapes, Lost Island, which is not the same company, I don't think, but it's the same idea. Manor Cafe, same idea. Gallery is the same idea, but instead of match three puzzles, instead of matching puzzles, you do like paint by number puzzles. Yeah, and but it's the same same idea. I've got like a Property Brothers one that's like match three, but then you do home renovations. So, and did any of those games... Wait, hold on. 
I'm not done. Wait, there's more. I've got home fantasy. I don't, and I don't always play these like at the same time. Like I haven't played gardenscapes in months because I've got a system on how I play them. But I've got a vineyard, vineyard valley. You're rebuilding a winery. Let's see. Word Villas, which is not a matching game, but it's a word game. And I'm rebuilding like a home type thing. Doing It's kind of like the, like the game Wordscapes, if you're familiar with Wordscapes. But it's also got the, the storyline, which I really like. Yeah, that one's really cool. So, so you like you like puzzle games. Lily Lily's Garden is is the one I'm playing right now. Oh, well, <laughs> Warrior Villas and Lily's Garden. Uh, and so my question a minute ago was, uh, have you paid anything at all for any of these games to actually get them at first? Like, no. Did, did any of them, they were all free games, right? They are. And okay. I don't ever buy anything. I'm completely against that. But they all do in-app purchase. That's how all of these games make yes. money? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, and I mean, I know you don't you don't spend money on them, but also sometimes no. you are, you're not often frustrated, honestly, like stuck on any of these games because of like timeouts or anything like that are you no. or is that just because you have so many of them yeah okay <laughs> so, but this is this is one of the reasons why i was excited about a service like apple arcade because i was like maybe she'll find a game <laughs> that that she can replace these with but honestly i mean and i guess that is one of the broader topics that i wanted to talk about with you and it'll be they an ongoing one, one i think you haven't found one yet, right? I haven't found one yet. Maybe there's one out there. Maybe we'll get some, like, listener mail or something. Or someone be like, oh, man, this is this is very similar to what you want. But I, now, I'm, I, I haven't found any that are like that right now. But also, to be fair, I don't. I was really enjoying that screensaver. Was that the ISS one? Uh, I, I don't know, I, actually. I Hang have been I think I can... dying to wait to see it because I haven't been able to see it always starts with new york so i never get to see it anyway yeah i haven't found one yet i would be really happy to find one well if you've played any of those games uh those the gardenscapes or homescapes or whatever and you have found a game that you feel has some of those same mechanics and you're enjoying on apple arcade please do write in or call us the the contact stuff is in the show notes and uh, let us know so that i can we can we can get kelly clued in and she can start playing those you've played a bunch of games sometimes like right now my i've added apple arcade games to my phone like right. i'm just telling them so but so they they look this is just a sidebar comment they look just like I don't have all the games I've downloaded recently in my games folder yet, but they look there's no distinction between the Apple Arcade games and my regular games. So until I open like an Apple Arcade games as Apple Arcade, but there's nothing on the logos to differentiate from the other ones. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll go play that. I mean, some of them have a different look. You know, well, no you and I have talked about, oh, those five games have the same kind of style to them or whatever, artistic style. But there's no yet yeah, notifying logo or something on them that tells me those are my Apple Arcade games. Now, I'm also, I'm not an idiot. I'm also aware that I could just put games in one and Apple Arcade in another folder. Yeah, I've got all of my Apple Arcade I totally get it. I know that's an easy solution. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to. Don't write me letters about that. Like, I know. But I do think it's odd a little bit that they don't have the, an Apple Arcade something. I, I will say I love the fact that they they all start with that Apple Arcade splash screen. Yeah. I mean, it's where we get the color of our logo from is that Apple Arcade splash screen. I love it. The only way they get to do that is because Apple is actually the publisher. They are the publishing company for each one of these games. They they own the game outright and are distributing it. Um, it's interesting to me that that's the way that they've set up the deal and that's the way that they're doing it. I do think you're right. I think it would be, it would be kind of neat. Maybe it's not. So you know how like you have the blue dot next to like a new app. Mm -hmm. Maybe there could be like, or just next to the title of the game. Like that's the first. Like there's an apple, and then the name of the game, like underneath the icon or whatever. Yeah, or even like the little that little peach or orange or reddish color, whatever that whatever that splash color is. Like, do that, a little dot next to the name of the game, like that yeah. would work too. 
something. I don't know. Like I said, it's I totally. That's, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I mean, know. especially if you're a family like ours that's like trying to wean off of regular games. You're like, oh, like, look, if we're going to do this subscription, let's just be all in on it, play all of those right. games. But I got to find the right ones that I want that fill all my needs. Very, very, that's a really good idea that I had not considered. But I mean, you could totally put it in two folders. Yes, yes, yes. That will solve <laughs> all the problems. I know. But that's, look, there's some people that don't put everything in folders, and that's okay too. Live your life. But. So let's talk about these games real quick. These four games in particular. Oh, yeah. okay. Let's get Frogger out of the way because you and I neither mm-hmm. one enjoyed Frogger that much. Well, no. Yeah. Here's the deal. Okay, it's a cute idea, but there's nothing spectacular about it, and it doesn't hold my attention. So. And so you made some people might love it. You made like, such Meh. an excellent point uh, the other day when we were playing, talking about you have all these games to try now mm-hmm. with Apple Arcade. I don't want to waste my time. Yeah, well, and and like, how long are you given each one? If there's a difficult like on ramping, you know, like yeah, to get oh into yeah, the game? yeah. If it's hard for me to understand from go, like there's been a couple of games that we can talk about later or whatever. But there's been a couple of games that I've tried that they don't give you any directions or any clue what you're supposed to be doing, or it takes so long to get to. Each task, what did I tell you? I played one game for like 20 minutes of the day and they were still having like talking. <laughs> and then they, I would choose a choice that they give me and it's the that wrong was, uh, choice. That was Neo Cab. Yeah. And then um, I choose choice and it was like turn red and be like, oh, she didn't know that. <laughs> or I hadn't forgiven her. And so then you have to pick the other one anyway. <laughs> So then it like goes back to it and then you have to push the right one and then it's like, oh yeah, my cheeks flushed out of embarrassment. She still knows how to make me smile or something. I don't know. But I wasn't doing anything that whole time. I was watching them in a car. It was so dumb. I have no idea what the point of the game is because there's no explanation. (laughs) That is... It is not the official full Apple, all about Apple Arcade <laughs> That's my opinion. Of, of Maybe people Neo love Arcade it, but Neotaxi, they don't know what they're Neo talking Cam, about. Whatever it is. They don't know what they're talking about. But, yeah, if it takes me longer than, than five minutes to understand, well, no, that's not true. At least ten minutes. If at ten minutes I don't have a clue what the objective is or what I'm supposed to be doing or what the right moves are because... You haven't told me, and I can't figure it out. I'm done. Get it. Mm. Or moving on. In the case of Frogger, I mean, Frogger made sense to you. You understood. Wait, wait, I thought what we were doing Rayman. Were. Well, well, we were we were talking about Frogger first, and so I'm, I've switched over here to do a little Dodo peek while we're talking. Oh, okay. About it. With the case of Frogger, it wasn't that you didn't understand it. But no, it didn't grab you. I it didn't. Yes. You didn't care. No. I, it's. Oof. Frogger is not a hard game to understand. But. <laughs> but. Yeah, it just, it was cute. Like, I really liked that the, that you are hopping through a toy room, like a, and it's got like you're hopping over blocks or balls or and the thing the things that are crossing, like an old Frogger, it was cars, and this one it's toy train cars or toy cars, and so like that's cute element of the game, and you like hop up a little broom or vacuum cleaner or something and you hop on the dresser oh yeah like, i forgot that that's my i like part that the first level. yeah it's really it's really cute but i don't i don't like fighting games or you know hit them up bang bang games or anything like that i really like calm games because i I like that that is a place I get to go and just be and do this kind of mindless. Well, but also for your kids, like you want the girls and the boys to be playing like fairly calm. Well, yes, yes. We talked about that last night. Yes, I do. I want them to, play. I don't want like the all these crazy, insane colors and like you can't, there's action constantly and everything's neon colors and stuff. I don't want I don't want them to to do all that. So the Apple Arcade games that I've played so far or the majority that I've seen, they all all of the colors are 
I don't know. Would you say that's muted? They're uh, not like super vibrant. I was, was going to say not muted. It's not yeah, pastel but it's, either, but it is a a soft it's palette. It's a soft palette. All of them are like that. And that, or at least the ones that I have had, excuse me, the ones that I have experienced, there's not like flashy, 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 flashy. And it is nice and cut. And I, and I can't help. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't follow Apple. I don't. But the only thing I can think, like, that had to be intentional. Like, based on, you know, studies and this and that and the other. And so I, I think because, some because, you know, some, some differently abled people, they have troubles with bright colors or strobes or whatever. With this... I feel like there is so much less risk of a person having a reaction to the to the atmosphere of the game. I think people on the autism spectrum could find these games calming and not extra stressful on them, you know, because they're not super busy. Well, I think there are definitely games that are like that. Now, but I will say there are also games that are hyperactive, like like you were talking earlier tonight about Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is Ugh. not your favorite. No, we'll uh, talk about that but one But even later. that game, yeah, we'll talk about it in full on um, yeah. a later episode. But even that game, uh, which I've, I've done a review of previously, it, um, it does have that softer color palette, even though it's like the neon and the flashing lights and the strobing and the, you know, crazy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. It's still kind of softer than it than you might think or a different company might make it except yeah i so part of that i think is technology based i think like this hardware lends itself to like the graphics can be most exciting in a certain kind of style yeah. perhaps but also i do think there is something to be said about like the developers that are building these games tend in a certain aesthetic direction too it's like a combination of the thing i don't think apple's necessarily like exerting force in that direction look at this look at this game this is dodo yes this is dodo peak that we're looking at. look at the the beach like i mean you could tell the water's moving but typically in video games it just like goes across the screen you know like this the water moves across the screen like this they like you're seeing it wash up on the beach and then they go back out. Watch number four. Yeah, yeah. It gets deeper and shallower. Like shallower. The, it's literally the tide is coming in on each of the islands. Yes, like the way it's like the water is slowly moving. Yeah. Like that is peaceful. <laughs> and like even the birds, the birds aren't flying like crazy fast. Like it's I mean it's Yes, it's a steady, steady animation. Uh, yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, you're right. It is a very peaceful sort of menu screen here. So we're watching Dodo Peak. We just played, which by the way, <laughs> Dodo Peak, when your Dodo yeah, dies, when it's killed, it is such a violent animation. You were talking about earlier the, the little eggs or the little Dodos behind you, like splatter in a red spray. But so does the primary Dodo, too, yeah. when they get oh, hit by an enemy. It yeah. is, it is kind of violent. It's, it's I mean, it's not, it's not violent. No, it's not actually. But, but it it's is, like. Like red. <laughs> In comparison to the rest of the game style, it is a little shocking. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, so this, the reason we're playing this game right now is because we've already actually deleted from the Apple TV uh, our copy of Frogger in uh, Toy Town because this is a better version of that. Oh, let, it's way better. Let me ask you about the level length. That was one of the big things that I mentioned earlier in this episode was that for me, the Dodo Peak, you could play two or three of these levels in the amount of time it takes you to play one level in Frogger, which for mobile gaming in general, but for any gaming that I do as a busy parent, which you were sort of referring to earlier, I'm always going to prefer shorter play periods. Yeah. Um, Do you... Is there any game that you can think of that you have played recently that you would want something in a longer... Like, hey, I want it to take at least 10 or 15 minutes for me to get through one thing. Um, hmm. Like one of the games we're talking about tonight? No, I mean just in general. 
Well, so like the example for me would be like the Legend of Zelda series on the Nintendo. I like when I get to sit down and play that, I'm going to play for like 30 or 45 minutes at a session at least, maybe an hour if I can go. And the same thing on the Apple TV now with Ocean Horn 2. When this I play that, this game does kind of stress me out. Dodo, <laughs> Dodo yes. Peak, yeah. Uh, with Ocean Horn 2, I when I play it, I want to play for like 45 minutes at a time. You know, I can't. That's not a game I can play for five minutes. Uh, this one. I love that I can play for five minutes, or even better, I can play for like forty-five seconds. You know, yeah. you can play one level. And like it's I would done. probably play, I don't know, three. I mean, it's maybe. crude, but you can play it on the toilet. You know, like that's one of the things about I mobile mean, gaming is that you can play it on the toilet. I mean, three, maybe four. Uh, no, probably like four or five levels, and then I'd probably be done with this. Yeah. Because it's very repetitive. Yes, the the levels are similar. The mechanic is very similar. The jumping around and collecting. Um, and, and I mean, it's not like it's not unbearably repetitive or anything. It is pretty repetitive, and I do lose interest, you know, rather quickly. But it, I mean, okay, so you've, you hatch these eggs. You gotta go down and get these eggs. Oh, uh, ah, how'd that work out? I don't know. You hop down these little platforms to these eggs, and you, when you get to the egg... It pops out a little baby that can immediately hop and stuff. And then the baby's one step behind you, so you got to get him back up to the top. Well, then it's like two dodo birds or three dodo birds. But then there's other stuff going on on the levels. Like there's these snakes that come by and they'll kill you with boulders or whatever. But you you don't have to just get out the way. The baby, you have to get the babies out of the way. And they're each one step behind each other so your tail's getting longer kind of like in snake it's hard to think about it like that's that. it that's it i did not i kept trying to think what mechanic is that that you have to get them all out of the way yeah it's and snake. you forget about the one behind it at the end or whatever that's yeah. it's snake it's, it's, it's snake. exactly what it is but that's um, really interesting but that is stressful to me why don't you load up rayman mini for a second maybe play through one level of that but and mm. and, and tell me so, okay, with Frogger, we talked about, you know, it's kind of fine. Just wasn't as good as another one that was available uh, right away. You, There were actually some things with Rayman that you didn't like, right? Don't really rem- remember. I mean, oh, yeah, I do remember. So the thing that, that bugged me in particular about Rayman versus uh, Way of the Turtle, which we're going to talk about finally in a minute... Uh, is the f- way of the turtle allows you to actually switch your direction with the D-pad. You know, I mean, you can use your, your analog stick or your controller or your touch controls and move back and forth. Whereas Rayman, you have to let the environment determine your direction. And so, like, uh, earlier, earlier tonight, actually, when you were playing, we got stuck in one of those situations where, like, you were trying to finish a level and... It was one of those sequences where you basically were in a loop because yeah. of the environment and you couldn't really get it. Like you had to get just the right time to jump yeah. or you couldn't get out of it. If that was way of the turtle, you could just turn around and try it again instead of having to go through the whole loop. Yeah. That was frustrating to me. Yeah. Ab, way of the turtle is just much more enjoyable. Um, so what is it about? Help me quantify or explain to people why... I mean, this art style, like looking at it on the TV, I mean, it's Rayman pretty. Mini is beautiful. This is yeah. this is a lovely designed game, and the graphics in particular on the background, like I, you look at the, the backgrounds are deep, you know, yeah, and they have they have they layers, have they depth. all have detail. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very compelling, and yet I prefer Way of the Turtle like way way more. Yeah, Way of the Turtle is cute. And what did you say? We, you came into the room last night, and I had it just up on the menu screen. And what did you say? S- those are two really cute little turtles. <laughs> oh. No, no, no! I said those are two. Those are two really adorable turtles. Yeah, that's. I think that's. I think you did call them adorable, uh, but they are. They are really adorable turtles. Had you ever played a uh, a Rayman game before this one? No, I, I had not either. I had not either. Um. So I wonder if like it's a it is a, a cute concept and it is it is a well done game like well put together game it is frustrating 
uh, bits, and I don't know. There's just something about it. It's it is very pretty. I also okay. We're collecting these looms, lums, whatever they are, but I don't know what we're doing with them. <laughs> well, I think that's why it, do I need them? I think one of the things that that does is that's basically showing you like how complete are you on that level. You know what I mean? Like how much of that level did you clear? Did you get all the looms? Did you get 80% of the looms? Well, 100% of the looms. No, I know. But like, what am I going to lose at some point that I need looms for? <laughs> uh, I that's, don't know that's what I mean. Anything. See, and then, then that's silly. I then, think it might just be like coins effectively. Like basically like points for the... Yeah, but if you get 100 coins in Mario, you get a free life. <laughs> Very, that's a very good point. Maybe and we just haven't gotten enough looms to do No, 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 that's yet. what I'm saying. But I'm saying I am, what level is this? Uh, You're on four? one four right one now. One four? Yeah. Okay, I still don't know what those are for. I don't know what the looms are for. That is fair enough. See, and there you go. Like, you've got too many games to choose from. Don't make it esoteric. I'm like, am I not going to find, like, okay. <laughs> Uh, Rayman fans, write in and tell us: Are the looms part of the ongoing franchise? If we were, if we were Rayman fans from way back, would we understand this better? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm imagining if you had some nostalgia for Rayman in particular, this game would be a lot more enjoyable. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying it's not enjoyable. I think it's a really great game. I think they did a really great job with it. I do, however, think that Way of the Turtle is just. More fun? Yeah. I don't know. My kids might might like this, but my five-year-old daughters will super-duper enjoy Way of the Turtle much, much, much more. So my thing is that I think we've got to keep in mind, and this might be a good example of this, some people are just literally going to prefer, taste-wise, this over oh, Way of the Turtle in totally. the same way that you and I do the other way around. And and the key for Apple is to have both, yes. to serve all of them. And they do. Because they're the now the Netflix of games. You know That's what they want to be with this service. And Netflix has something for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's play the game that we really like. Let's play a little <laughs> Way of the Turtle. So uh, I, I talked a little bit about like what this game does and some of the things that I really like about it. What do you think is your favorite Look how thing? cute they are. Yeah, they are really adorable. Remember I said, uh, for a second I thought, man, they have really big smiles. Here, I'm going to so, let you play, actually. <clears throat> that's just their necks. <laughs> they have really big smiles. No, it's their necks. They're so That's hilarious. cute. Uh, what What is your favorite thing about this game? Um, the way it pans, like the camera. Oh, how it like follows you around the world as you move through a level. Yeah, and the. Oh, I forgot what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Um. Use your ability there. Yeah. yeah. You got to jump. I jump first. and then yeah. This is an auto moving game, isn't it? Yes, they both yes. are. Yes, okay, yeah. Yeah, the way the camera pans and stuff and changes direction is very nice and easy and very smooth. It just feels very natural, I guess, is... I love that change in perspective, how it makes it, like, super novel. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. like, I get really used to playing the game like this, <laughs> but you come around a corner and all of a sudden I'm looking from a different angle. You yeah. Know? And that totally changes the feel of the game for a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you were stuck on this one, aren't you? Just not quite doing it right. There you go. There we go. Yeah, I love I love when I don't have to hold down an acceleration key just because that is like this is such a first world world problem, but like it's such a, like, it. my thumb gets tired from holding down the gas or holding down the, you know, the forward move button or something, well, you know? Well, for some people, it's literally an accessibility issue, too, right? Oh, but, totally. But for, for people who are not avid gamers, normally, 
it is a weird thing to like literally uh, contort your hand into some position to be able to hold, you know, uh, a, a button like that. And so it's one of the reason why I think those non gamers don't, it's harder to on ramp into console gaming because you're not used to that sort of activity. So I think you're absolutely right. I think you're, I don't think you're the only one that feels that way about like, like an auto runner in its own way is like, Oh, nice. I don't have to hold the button. Well, you were saying the same thing about How a racing do I game earlier. Shell? Uh, you you choose it with the like the go button, the jump button. Yeah. You can only change shells when you're on the little you got it. Oh. oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love the different abilities. Like that's a great mechanic too. I mean, it's not that different than, you know, like Mario's power-ups. Like now he's got the raccoon suit and now he's yeah. got the fire. Or whatever, but like but. you change shells which, oop, no, oh, Lord. <laughs> I I didn't realize that uh, the the blue shell would actually ah! protect you from harm like that. You like you can hit spikes with the blue shell on, and uh, if you're in the locked position, it doesn't hurt you. There we go. Uh yeah, but the shells give you different abilities. Like there's the shell that stops you from moving forward. There's a shell that rockets you forward. And then the and other then one, another you one. haven't gotten in your game yet, but there. Okay, there's well, don't here. tell me. Okay, I won't. Um, you can you can add it in in a minute. <laughs> Gives you two strengths. Oh, I need to use that. Yeah, it's not something you use. It's just there. You just have it. But I only have one heart. That doesn't increase your heart. It increases uh. your strength. Oh, wait. That's not the one I needed. No, you need the green one. I know. <laughs> Do you, though? That's why I just said, that's not the one I need. Nice. <sighs> Very well done. Oh, Lord, I got to do this one more time. <laughs> yeah, they have these, like, purple spiky oh, no. things that are a total copycat from Mario. Like the gray spiky thing. So okay, they are not as much of a Mario copycat as the little spike shell <gasps> ghost in Pinball Wizard. The spike shell ghost in Pinball Wizard is borderline copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it's ah! <laughs> I keep fr- not hitting your ability. Yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not a lawyer. I don't even play one on a podcast, so I don't actually know whether it, whether it's copyright infringement or or anywhere near it. But it it strikes me as <laughs> just too close of an homage <laughs> to get away with. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that uh, I mean Nintendo is pretty litigious too. Honestly. Oh, let's talk about checkpoints. There are checkpoints all over the levels, like. Like, you know how in Sonic you'd have, like, the one checkpoint in the middle that would turn from, like, red to blue or blue to red? The little yeah, bug. Super Mario, you generally have, like, a flag halfway through that you can, you Sometimes, know, yeah. trip over. Yeah. yeah. These are, like, really close together. Like, these checkpoints, they happen all over. So, like, if you die, you don't start way back. Like, which is really cool, which will make my kids really happy. This is a super kid-friendly game. It gets a little complicated pretty quickly, I feel like. Um, yeah, for the girls especially, like oh. they're they're going to be able to play. They'll be able to play a couple of hours probably before they sort of like. Okay, well now that we can't really play this game anymore yeah. from where we are, uh, or not by ourselves anymore. Anyway. Oh Lord. Oh, that's stressful. Goodness gracious. Wait, I ran right into it. Oh, goodness. Hey, you got a token. Uh, Oh Oh my gosh, that's so harsh. Okay. (gasps) Very well done. Oof. Very well done. On my fifth try. Very well done, Kelly. (laughs) We're going to edit out like one through four, though, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. What is happening here? Just bad guys. He's like, let me out. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just got to kill all the bad guys and the temple unlocks. Come here. Ha-ha. 
more bad guys. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right though about the um very oh. <laughs> about the very frequent checkpoints. But to think about that again, not only in terms of uh, making it easier for like younger gamers or inexperienced gamers, but also makes it easier to play in short bursts, right? Like I can play through just like one small section, hit a checkpoint, know that my game saved and put it away. Yeah. Uh, when you're talking about these games Ooh. living... I mean, I'm playing this a lot on the Apple TV because I've got the controller and it's handy and I really enjoy it on the big screen. But the vast majority of people who play Apple Arcade games, at least anytime soon, are going to be playing them on a phone. And a handful more are going to be playing them on the iPad. And very few of them are going to be playing them on the Apple TV, comparatively speaking. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, I love this game. I'm so glad that we found it. And I hope that uh, this developer in particular makes more like this. I'd like to see a sequel to this one after I'm done playing it. Yeah. You got anything else that you want to add today? Mm, I don't think so. Well, we'll have you back on again soon. <laughs> Hopefully, because somebody sends us a great match three game for you to play. Oh, that? man, that'd be so exciting. <laughs> please, oh, please, oh, please. And ladies and gentlemen, that is another episode of All About Apple Arcade. I want to remind you to check out the show notes and uh, links. Check out the website, allaboutapplearcade.com, and get every episode as well as info on all the places you can join our conversation and community there. Thanks again for listening, and until next week, I hope you have fun playing. This has been All About Apple Arcade. <laughs> Two guys and a rogue. I'm one guy. I'm the other. And this is The Network.